there's a food texture that's very popular in Asia. It's called Q. It's a texture of boba, perfectly cooked noodles, or mochi. But what do all these things have in common that make them Q? The food material is chewy, but it's not as chewy as a beef steak, for example. And it's elastic, but not as elastic as plastic. It's a combination of chewy, elastic, and it gives you just that sensation you enjoy chewing them in our mouth and can be broken down easily. But at the same time, you have that texture against your teeth and gum. And that's probably the best way I can describe it. <laughs> this is Professor Joe. He's a food scientist who's been studying how different texture in food affects the way people enjoy it. Right. People like a food very much because of two factors. One is what we call flavor. It's a taste and the aroma. And the other one is texture. We tried to solve the mystery of what makes Q, Q. Chewy to me is not Q, it's a completely different sensation. Mochi is, is Q. Uh, mochi is super, yeah, it's Q, yeah, it's right? Like, yeah, you know, like uh, super Q. Uh, uh, boba is, is Q, like they yeah. all have this unique, like... Maybe, maybe. So part yeah, right? of that being Q is the starchy. We don't know when the term Q was invented exactly, but many believe that it originated from the Taiwanese Hokkien word Q, which means bendy and bouncy. So the Q we are talking about does not come from the alphabet. According to the professor, all Q food is chewy, but not all chewy food is Q. So beef is chewy, but mochi is also chewy, but it's a different kind. Bread is chewy, but bread is not QQ. So what makes Q different from the chewiness you'd find in gummy bears, steak, or sourdough bread? With my definition, the material must have a reasonable elasticity, which means the material will come back to its original shape. Or, if you reduce them into smaller pieces, each of the smaller pieces have a similar property as a larger one. In short, food that is cute is springy with some bounds. An initial resistance to bite, followed by a tender interior. Why is this specific texture so particularly well-loved in Asia? So of the three factors of Q, elasticity, sensation, and chewiness, the last one, chewiness, is not always seen as positive in Western cooking. Is that normally that chewy, that octopus? I think it is. I've heard people say that before. Would you be my guest? Just so I'll be your guest. Please, my darling. Very tough. Huh? But in Asia, chewiness affects the way we perceive flavour. To confirm this theory, we did a little experiment. We got six fishball brands with similar flavours but different levels of chewiness. We got our taste testers to rate them. Mm. Okay, uh, I think it's one, two, five. Four, two, five. Four, two, one. Second force five. Turns out the ones they liked best were also the chewiest. Chewiness is the sensation, as we said, coming from the procedure of chewing a food. Let's focus on the control release in our mouth. And that is basically how the flavor can last longer. And when you chew, and they will be released. I think it gives a good mouth feel when you're eating it. I think for a meal, it sort of adds a bit of texture and um, as a snack, like bubble tea, it's something I can do while I'm doing work, so I can move my mouth, so it's not so boring. I like that. As I chew, then the flavour will come out and all. It's not just like, it disintegrate in my mouth, yeah. Yeah, it's just fun to <laughs> chew in your mouth. So in our region, there are a lot of uh, products based on rice. And a major component of rice is starch. Starch have a property called gelatinization. After gelatinization, it becomes a gel. And that gel often gives you elasticity. Elasticity is one of the key uh, elements responsible for this QQ. 
uh, texture. I think uh, we love it because of the full culture and also because of the uh, abundance supply of some food ingredients in the past.